Hello and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions hydrology education videos. In an earlier video, we touched on the rational method, which is one of the most commonly used stormwater methods for determining peak runoff based on a project site. But there are many other methods that have been used for quite a long time to also determine site runoff. Another one of these methods is called the SCS runoff method, which uses a variety of curve numbers and other factors to determine runoff off of a project site. So like I said, we covered the rational method and how when it rains on a project site, that water must go somewhere, it must infiltrate into the soil, or most likely in a lot of project cases, it will run off the soil. And we have to be able to calculate how much runoff is coming off of that project site in order to model our downstream detention facilities and keep that water from flooding the local community or damaging the environment. So as we can see here, when it rains, now that water is running off, it'll create a channel or a stream and then we will have to model a detention facility or some sort of natural means to retain that water and to prevent the damage to the environment, to our wildlife, and of course, to humans as well. So that is one of the points of an equation like the SCS runoff method, just like the rational method is another way of determining that site runoff based on precipitation and soil types. So let's go over an overview of the SCS runoff method. So it's another way to measure runoff. It includes the variables of rainfall, retention, and an abstraction. So similar to the rational method, but it has quite a few differences. And we're using the curve numbers, which are based off hydrologic soil, land use, and conditions. The SCS runoff method is another single event hydrology method, meaning it's not modeling the hydrologic cycle based on a time step or anything. It's based off a single event occurring most likely in a vacuum-like scenario. Before we go into the SCS runoff method equations, we need to define the variables that are used in these equations. S equals the maximum retention after runoff begins in inch inches. P equals the rainfall in inches, and Q equals the runoff depth in inches. I sub A equals the initial abstraction of the soil. Also, curve numbers will be involved in these equations, which are based off hydrologic soil, land use, and conditions. So here's the equations we have. Q equals P minus 0.2S squared divided by P plus 0.8S. So taking account into precipitation, runoff, and our maximum retention. Then equation two is maximum retention or S equals 1000 divided by the curve number of the soil minus one. Equation three equals the initial abstraction equals 0.2 times S. Then the fourth equation is Q equals P minus I squared divided by P minus I plus S. So those are the four equations we can use to help us determine the runoff in inches off a of site, the initial abstraction, the precipitation, or the retention of the soil. Now let's get into curve numbers here. There, are, These are the SCS curve numbers for different land use types. So you can see the cover type, its description, and then the curve numbers for hydrologic soil groups. So you can see this, the soil groups A, B, C, and D. The cover type includes pasture grassland, then a meadow continuous grass, brush or brush weed grass mixture, or wood grass combination. And then for each of those, there's a description of if it's poor, good, or fair, and then what it would be for each of those soil type uh, letters, so A, B, C, or D. The curve numbers are divided by soil group and land use types, and higher curve numbers typically indicate usually less runoff. So let's begin solving some sample problems here with the SCS runoff equations. So for our first problem, a basin with a curve number of 75 has precipitation of 6 inches. Determine the runoff from the site using the SCS runoff equations. So for solving equations, we like to follow a three-step process. Determine the given variables, the determined variables that need to be found, and then apply the proper equations. So if we go here, S equals 1000 divided by CN minus one. We can use that to find the value of S and then we can find Q. So 1000 divided by 75 minus one equals 12.33. And we can plug that value into the Q equation of Q equals P minus 0.2S squared divided by P plus 0.8S. If you finish that calculation, you get Q equals 0.787 inches. And if we look at our what our variables were here, we can see that Q equals the runoff depth in inches. So we have a 0.787 inches of runoff depth given the project situation. Now let's look at a second problem here. Find the precipitation of a basin that consists of group B, poor meadow grass, and 1.5 inches of runoff off the site. So we're gonna follow our same three-step process, determine the given variables, find what variables that need to be found, and then apply the proper equations. Now, notice we weren't given a curve number, we were just given information about the project site. It's a group B poor meadow grass. So we need to look at our curve number table to find which curve number would apply based on the hydrologic soil group. So we're given that it was B poor meadow grass. Well, meadow seems to be the second column. It's poor, so less than 50% ground cover. And then B, so it looks like our curve number is gonna be 67 for this problem. 
So we're going to plug 67 into the equation s equals 1000 divided by cn minus 1 and we get a value of 13.93. Now given that we want to find our precipitation. So we want to find our initial abstraction which was 0.2 times 13.93. So that's going to equal 2.79. Then plug that into our final equation. Remember we were told that there's 1.5 inches of runoff. So 1.5 equals p minus 2.79 squared divided by p minus 2.79 plus 13.93 which was the s value. And then if we solve that binomial, we can find that P equals 8.17 inches of precipitation for this problem. So that's how to use the SCS runoff method. It's a system that turns runoff into rainfall and is also an empirical system based on the data given. So I hope that video was useful. We have a guide called the Ultimate Hydrology Guide, which breaks down the various methods such as the rational method, the SCS runoff method, and continuous simulation hydrology to give you an idea of all these methods that are used in the industry as well as their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to using them on your projects. I hope this video was useful. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.